At samahan niyo po akong basahin ang, uh, ang Isaiah chapter 43 verse 11 ng Old Testament. Gayun din ang, uh, sa New Testament, Matthew chapter 1 verses, verse 21 and John chapter 8 verse 2 to 11 and 23 to 24. Let's read Isaiah 43 verse 11. I, I am the Lord and besides me, there is no Savior. And in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And in John chapter 8, verses 2 to 11, Early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and placing her in the midst. They said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now in the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? This they said to test him that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. And as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be, f be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more he bent down and wrote on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the older ones, and Jesus was left alone with the women standing before him. Jesus stood up and said to her, Women, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, sin no more. And on John chapter 8, verses 23 to 24, he said to them, You are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. I told you that you will die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. And uh, for the reading of our Confessions, let us also read the Heidelberg Catechism, Lord's Day 11, na makikita nyo po sa inyong uh, Salter book, dun po sa Section on Doctrinal Standards, page number 18. Heidelberg, question 28 and 29. Question 29, what is the Son, what is the Son of God called? Jesus meaning Savior. Answer, because he saves us from our sins, salvation cannot be found in anyone else. It is futile to look for any salvation elsewhere. Question 30, do those who look for their salvation and security in saints, in themselves or elsewhere, really believe in the only Savior, Jesus? Answer, no. Although they boast of being his, by their deeds, they deny the only Savior and Deliverer, Jesus. Either Jesus is not a perfect Savior, or those who in true faith accept this Savior have in him all they need for their salvation. Let us pray. Almighty God, we praise you and worship you. For you are the Holy One that worthy to be praised. Lord, we pray that may you cause in our mind to be open as we hear your word. And may you prepare our hearts as well as to receive your teachings and instruction through the preaching of your word. And enable your servant to faithfully proclaim that word in the power of the Holy Spirit. Once again, we humbly pray that may you do all this petition. For the sake of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Makakaupo na po ang lahat.
Muli po, magandang tanghali uh, sa ating lahat, aking mga kapatid sa Panginoon. And it's been a while since the last sermon delivery that I had. At sa hapong pong ito, I will be del- delivering the sermon Lord's Day 11 by Stephen T. Hart. Sa ating pong kapanahonan ngayon, with the rise of computer and uh, accounting programs, and other computer technologies, we have all become known by a number. What I mean with that is almost everyone or almost everybody have a medical number or medical insurance number. Uh, almost adult have their own driver's license number, their own passport number. And some of us uh, have our own bank account. And for the students, uh, most of you or all of you have your own student ID number. It seems though, whenever meron tayong uh, contract or contact with the government institution or whenever we transact in business, the first thing na hihingi nila or they would ask is that, uh, what is your account number? Do you have any government-issued number? Do you have any driver's license number? If you're a student, do you have your ID number? And so on. But the same place na kung saan we transact, uh, they will also quickly to add, uh, to us, you are a name. It's, you're not just a number that they have to add because a name is personal while a number is not. Because a number suggests that we are nobody in a sea of nameless face. Kung saan, kung titingin lang kayo sa number list, when you look at the Excel, you cannot identify who's who when you look at only their numbers. A name suggests you are an individual, a person who is valued. Ang pangalan ay very important for the parents na kung saan nag long ago bago pa ipanganak ang kanilang mga anak. Uh, what name they should be naming them? They probably, they choose the name for its meaning or, or the name uh, ng kanilang anak uh, before a celebrity or someone else. Marahil sa isang celebrity or sa isang Bible character. Like my two, two sons, I named them Aaron David and the youngest one is Abram Daniel. Or a name will be chosen because it is a unique or because it sounds nice. One of, one of uh, way the parents do is combine the name of the parents, both the husband and the wife. Like yung pangalan po ni Sister Edeline. It's a combination of Eddie and Deline. Uh, humingi po ako sa kanya ng permiso na gamitin ko ang kanyang pangalan. Kagabi pa po. In the Bible, it was often the meaning of the name that was the reason why it was given. Like Adam called his wife women because she was taken out of men. Later, uh, binago niya po yung pangalan ni, 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 ni Eve uh, in, in, into Eve rather than a woman because she was the mother of all the living. When Eve gave birth to a son, she named him Cain, saying, I have acquired a man from the Lord. At later naman po, when Lamech the son of Methuselah gave birth to a son, she called, or he called him Noah, which sounds like comfort, saying, this one will comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord has cursed. Likewise, Samuel was named because he was asked of the Lord. The same way Solomon reminds us of the word peace. And the Lord said in 1 Chronicle 29, 22.9 that Solomon would be a man of rest for he would give him peace 
and quietness. Marami pa pong examples sa Bible uh, patungkol sa iba't ibang pangalan wherein merong significance ang pangalan ng isang tao and it clearly explains how they name it. At ang pangalan for God Himself also have a great significance like yung Yahweh Sabbath, the Lord of hosts, El Shaddai, it means God Almighty. So, when the Son of God was to be born, the name that He would receive was very important. Nung ang ating Panginoon ay papanganak, yung pangalan niya ay may significance o may malaking kahalagaan. Not only would this name describe who the Son of God was, but it would also describe what He would do. Now, sa Old Testament had already given a name for God's Son, which is Emmanuel, which means God is with us. But sa kanyang kapanganakan, on His birth, at His birth, the Lord wishes to give Him another name also. And so, isang totoong ama sa langit na kung saan ay uh, a child to be born, he instructed Mary in Luke chapter 1, verse 31. It says, Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. At the same command to the name of God's son was repeated. Ito naman po kay Joseph na makikita natin in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, saying, and she, which is si Mary, shall bring forth a son, and you shall call him name, his name, Jesus. At yung next passage or yung next place po nito, God gives the reason for this name. And it says, for he will save his people from their sins. So, Yung binasa po natin sa Heidelberg question o Lord's Day 11, it does well to take note that the name and as in the Lord question 11, question, uh, Lord's Day 11, question 29, ang katanungan po doon, why is the Son of God called Jesus? That is, Savior. For this name was specifically chosen by God. The Father himself as a name that was fitting for his son who was to be born sa ating pong mundo. It was the name of hope, of blessings for the world. Calling him Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. So, ang preaching po natin sa hapong pong ito, preaching of the gospel this afternoon, under the following theme, the Son of God called Jesus, our Savior, which is in your bulletin, nakalagay po dyan, may dalawa pong sub-point. First point is, He is our complete Savior. And the second point is, He is our exclusive Savior. Point number one, in John chapter 8, yung kanina po nating binasa, verse 25, ang mga pareseyo ay tinanong si Jesus, at ang famous question na ito, sabi, who are you? Tinanong ng mga para sa iyo, who are you? This was a question not just on the lips of the Pharisees, but a question that others wanted answered also. Like in Luke chapter 9, for the example, King Herod wanted to see Jesus saying, who is this of whom I heard? such thing. And Jesus came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey with all the people shouting, Hosanna in the highest. At ang buong siyudad move and saying, Who is this? Sabi po yun sa Matthew 21 verse 10. And in Matthew chapter 8 verse 27, that was also the question that the disciples themselves Ask. After he had commanded the he had commanded the wind 
to stop blowing and the waves to be still. At that time, ang mga disipulo ay nagtanong in wonders, Who can this be, sabi nila, that even the winds and the sea obey him? But when the Pharisees, yung kaninang binasa po natin sa chapter 8, asked Jesus, Who are you? They did not ask in curiosity or in wonder like yung nabasa natin in the previous verses. They asked this question, Who are you? Out of scorn or out of unbelief. Literally, they asked, You, who are you? In other words, who do you think you are to say such things to us? Like in verse 57 ng chapter 8, they ask again, Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? And the prophet who died? Who do you think make yourself out to be? Yun po ang katanungan ng mga pariseyo. Although yung mga pariseyo, they knew him. They knew that he was called Jesus. Yung pangalan po nito is very common, very familiar in their time, nung panahon ng ating Panginoong Jesus. Relatively common yung pangalan ni Jesus. Ang Greek name na Jesus is translated in Joshua or Yeshua, which means the Lord saves. Perhaps matatandaan nyo yung Joshua, the son of Nun. Ito yung panahon na Ang Israelite ay uh, dinala sa promised land after Moses, si Joshua po yun. Gayun din, makikita natin yung pangalang Joshua or Yeshua, the high priest in the day nung after the exile. Ito yung panahon ng Zechariah the prophet. At ng ating Panginoon ay pinanganak, when Jesus was born, there were other names Joshua and Jesus. Marami pong pangalan ang panahon ni Jesus na Joshua or Jesus ang tawag po. Kung kaya, kinwalipay ang pangalan Panginoon o Jesus in His time. And He was referred to Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, sometimes He was called Jesus the son of Joseph the carpenter. And even He was called Jesus son of David. Nung siya po ay nakapako sa cross, meron pong sign na nakalagay. This Jesus, that King, the King of the Jews. Pero po, dun sa John chapter 8 natin pong binasa kanina, the Pharisees asking, You call yourself Jesus, but who are you? Sino ka ba? Although ang mga pariseyo uh, were terribly wrong in asking that question. They are asking it in unbelief. The question itself, bagamat ito ay importante, it must be asked, who is this Jesus? Sino nga ba itong si Jesus? Sa inyo po, naitanong niyo po ba yun? Sa inyong sarili yun? Sa kapanahonan po natin ngayon, or in modern day theologians, those who do not accept the Bible as the true inspired Word of God, ang understanding po nila about Jesus is just a great man, a good example, as one who showed love and compassion just as we should show love and compassion. Ganun po nila tinitingnan lang. They see Jesus or they see Him as the champion of the poor, as one who wished to free the world from misery, just as we too should work hard and free the world from misery. So, it seems walang distinction, walang pagkakaiba between Christ and the people in the modern theologians. There's no distinction between the creator and the creature. Sa ibang pagkakataon naman o sa ibang panahon, or even today, uh, we or others see Jesus as a man who had a good moral. Sometimes they see Jesus as the great example who says the great commandment to love your neighbor as yourself. 
He is the one who encouraged you to be a better person. The sad thing is, not more than that. Many do not see Jesus, the one who came to save us from our sins. Sa mga para sa'yo, they think, or at least work on the premise that they don't need a Savior. Di nila kailangan ng tagapagligtas. That is, they don't need to make use of one who died to take away their sins. Di nila kailangan yung mag-aalis ng kanilang kasalanan. For that was the problem with the Pharisees. They asked Jesus, who are you? Because Jesus was challenging each one of them to think and ask, who am I? Yun po ang tanong ng Panginoong Isus sa kanila. In John chapter 6 or John chapter 8, the scribe and the Pharisees came to Jesus, bringing with them a woman who had been caught in adultery, in the very act of adultery. As far as they were concerned, this woman was guilty beyond doubt. She deserves to be punished. She deserved to be stoned to death. But they had a bigger problem to catch. They were hoping that Jesus would give a response that would bring the wrath from the Roman government upon him. Inaasahan nilang magkakaroon ng maling sagot ang Panginoong Jesus para ma-accuse siya at ma-cut siya at mas, masa, ma-violate niya ang Roman government. Dahil ang mga Jew they were not permitted to stone a people. Or, inaasahan nila that they would defy or Jesus would defy the law of Moses. And so, in verse 5 of John chapter 8, they asked Jesus this. Now, Moses, in the law, commanded us, or commanded us that such to be stoned. They asked Jesus, but what do you say? Anong masasabi mo? And then when Jesus said nothing, but stooped down and started writing ng kanyang finger on the ground, they kept asking, well, what do you say? Do you agree with Moses? What do you say? Do we stone her? Or shall we release this woman who's guilty beyond doubt? What do you say, Jesus? But Jesus knew what is in their heart. Alam ng Panginoon kung ano nasa puso nila. And he knew that this was not just, or this was not the time for condemning this woman. The point na sinasabi ng ating Panginoong Isus to the Pharisees was this. Never mind what you think about this woman. The question is, what is your sin? What is your bondage? Are you in the position to judge? Nakikita po ba natin ito, mga kapatid? Jesus, Jesus knew the hearts of the Pharisees and the scribes. He knew that this same name who, prepend, who, pre, who pretended to be shocked dun sa nagawang kasalanan ng babaeng to were at the same time plotting in their own hearts to commit even greater sin which is to murder the Son of God. What Jesus therefore wanted the scribe and the Pharisees to think about was their own depravity, their own sinfulness, their own need for salvation. So what Jesus wishes in John chapter 8 was to open the eyes of the scribe and the Pharisees to the desperate state of their own hearts. The Pharisees were quick to condemn this woman for adultery, but at the same time, they tried to fool themselves in believing 
that they themselves were righteous. They think that they are free. They think that they were good. They are children of Abraham. They don't need a savior. Pero nagsalita ang Panginoon sa mga Pariseo and he spoke to the Pharisees and said, "No. You're not free. You're not righteous. You're not without sin. And he who commits sin is a slave to sin. And if you don't want to die in your sin, then you, O Pharisees, then you have to believe that I am he. And I am the one whom the Father has sent to be your Savior. You see, to be saved by Jesus, we first need to know what we need to be saved from. Kailangan natin malaman kung saan ba tayo maliligtas o saan tayong niligtas. We need to have our eyes open to the true state of our heart condition. We need to plumb the depth of our depravity, the depth of our sin. We need to confess that in our old sinful state, we are so corrupt that we are totally unable to do any good, and are inclined to do evil. So, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, when God gave His name, or His Son, the name Jesus, He said to Joseph, and you shall call His name Jesus. Bakit po? Anong dahilan? Bakit sinabi na Jesus, anong ating Panginoon niyo? O ni Jesus? For He will save His people from their sin. And so by calling his son Jesus, God not only revealed what Christ had to do or had come to do, but also to reveal the state of our hearts that we, his people, have sinned that only Jesus can save us from it. Nakuha po ba natin yan? Did we get it? Nakuha po ba natin ang ibig sabihin nun? Jesus said in John chapter 8, verse 34, Whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. We do not become sinners because we commit a specific sin. We commit a specific sin because we are sinners. Let me repeat that. We do not become sinners because we commit a specific sin, but rather we commit those specific sin because we are sinners. Our sins reveals what is going on inside our hearts. Our sins reveals just how desperate the situation we are into, how desperate we need a Savior, how desperate we are enslaved in sin. We are desperate. I am desperate. Just like yung mga pareseyo, we are quick to see yung mga kasalanan ng ibang tao. Just like the Pharisees, by nature, we tend to judge according to the flesh. John 8, 15. Just like the Pharisees, we have our own list of sins. That are, that are shocking or some sins that are somehow more respectable, nonetheless, it is still a sin. Just like the Pharisees, our natural sinfulness want to scream out that we are okay, that we don't need a Savior to save us from our sin, that we are free. Pero, Ang pangalang Jesus, the name Jesus, directly confront us all. For we are all like sheep have gone astray. We were all conceived and born in sin. We are all by nature in bondage to sin. The chain that binds one person might look very different to the, ta- the chain of others. But they are just the same. They are just real. Jesus said again, let me reiterate, whoever commits sin 
is a slave to sin. And the only way to escape that situation is to turn to the one whom God sent to free us from that sin. To turn to the one named Jesus, for he is the complete Savior. He is the one who takes away not just our misery and not just even the occasional sins. He is the one who takes away the bondage, the chains of sin. He is the one who set us free. And if the Son makes you free, makes me free, you shall be free indeed. John 8, 36. So Jesus said, whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. Pero ang katotohanan, but the truth will set you free. And because Jesus said, I am the Son of God, Ako ang anak ng Diyos, and because I have been named Jesus, Savior, I can set you free. Jesus said, turn to me and trust me, and you will receive the complete salvation from all your sins. He is our complete Savior. That leads us to the point number two ng ating pong sermon he is our exclusive Savior. Lord's Day 11 asks, Why is the Son of God called Jesus? That is, Savior. And then the answer gives two reasons. May dalawang kadahilanan bakit po yung tanong na yon. Each begin with a question or because or reason. The Son of God is called Jesus first. Because he saves us from all our sins. That is, he is our complete Savior. And the second, because salvation is not to be sought or not to be found anyone else. That is, he is our exclusive Savior. Dun po sa answer 30 of Lord's Day 11 ask a further question about those who do not see Jesus as their exclusive Savior, who instead seek salvation not in Jesus but in in saints, in their own good works, or somewhere else. Meron pong historical background bakit po ang catechism ay nagtanong ng ganon or Historical reason for the catechism asking this question. In the time of the Reformation, when the catechism was written, the Roman Catholic taught the people to look for salvation, not in Jesus, or not just in Jesus, but also in the saints, like uh, Mary in particular. And also in their own good works, and uh, mostly emphasize in the church, they have to look for salvation. Pero yung idea that the salvation can be found, at least in part, outside of Jesus Christ alone, is commonly held nung panahon na yon. But the exclusive claim of Jesus that he is the only way cause offense in the days when he walked sa mundong ito. And are still many today who refuse to accept the exclusiveness of Christian religion or yung exclusiveness of the Christian faith. Pero the Bible makes it very clear that there is only one way to be saved. And the only way through faith in the Son of God, who died and rose for the complete forgiveness of our all sins. In John chapter 8, verse 24, sinabi na Jesus sa mga para sayo, Therefore I say to you that you will die in your sin. For if you do not believe that I am He, you will die in your sin. So Jesus made it very, very clear. Either he is a complete savior with the result that we will all die in our sin, or when we 
by true faith accept Jesus as our Savior, we will find in him all that is necessary for our salvation. At ang reason for that is God the Father had named his son Jesus, had appointed him to be the Savior so that in him and through him he might be set free or we might be set free from our sin and be able to live with God forever. Ang mga paraseyo po ay nakondem in their sin because they did not believe Jesus. Nor the things na ginawa ng ating Panginoon o sinabi ng Panginoon. And Jesus pressed the point further by telling them or to the Pharisees by rejecting me him, they also rejected the one who sent him. They also reject the Lord God. So, pinres ito ng Panginoon. Hindi lang ako ang nire-reject nyo. Nire-reject nyo rin ang nagpadala sa akin. At nire-reject nyo rin ang Ama sa Langit. In the Old Testament, the Lord had made it clear that His people, that they were to look to Him alone for their help and salvation. He alone is the great God and sa- Savior. Kaya nga in Isaiah, whose name means the Lord saves, yun po ang ibig sabihin nun, Isaiah proclaimed in Isaiah 43 verse 11, I, even I, the Lord, and besides me, there is no Savior. It's very clear, even in the Old Testament, Isa lang ang tagapagligtas. But when his son was born, or to be born, the Lord said, His name is Jesus. For he is the one who will save his people from their sins. Paano po ito? How could it be? Jesus said, I and the Father are one. And before Abraham was, I am. For Jesus, our Savior, is Himself the great I Am. Jesus Himself, our God. So, sinabi ng Panginoong Jesus, Jesus said, If you do not believe that I am He, whom I claim to be, you will die in your sin, John 8, 24. For there is no other way. And that is also how we are to read Yung iba't ibang great I am. Kagaya sa John 8.12, sabi doon sa statement, I am the light of the world. Sorry. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness shall not work, walk in darkness, but have light of life. <coughs> he also said, I am the bread of life. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. John 6, verse 41 and 51. Another I am in John chapter 10, verse 9. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. John eleven twenty five. I am the resurrection and life and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. John fifteen five. I am the vine. He who abides in me and I in him bear much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Notice po yung last verse na binasa po natin. He says on the last verse, John 15, 5, For without me, you can do nothing. That is why it is useless to seek your salvation from any place outside of Jesus. In Him, we can do all things. But outside of Him, we can do nothing. Nothing. 
Outside of Him, we most definitely certainly cannot find salvation. And there is only, or there is also the well-known saying in John 14, 6, which I believe all of us are probably knows this verse. John 14, 6 says, 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is no other way. Kaya mga kapatid ko at mga magulang, Jesus is our exclusive Savior. Again, I repeat, Jesus is our exclusive Savior. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides in him. John 3, 36. At kung hindi po natin ito pinaniniwalaan, aking mga magulang at mga kapatid, and if we don't believe that, we declare by our unbelief that Jesus is a liar. That He is not the Savior whom He claims to be. And in doing so, we also declare that God the Father is a liar. That He did not speak the truth when He named His Son Jesus, saying, because He will save His people from their sin. Mabigat po yung kasabihin ito, and it's so hard saying, for there is no room for compromise. Either we trust Jesus for our complete Savior, or we deny the only Savior, Jesus. And the Bible is very clear. The Son of God is called Jesus, for He is our complete Savior. Believe in it, follow Him. Pero habang pumapalawan ng ating pangunawa sa salita ng Panginoon ay lumalago, and as our understanding grow in the knowledge of our Lord, we place our trust in Jesus. We see Jesus in all that is all that we need. We see Jesus that the chain is broken, that we are set free, that we are saved from all our sins. Dahil when we belong to our faithful Savior, Jesus Christ, then, when, then we may be assured of this, that He has fully paid our sins with his precious blood and has set us free from all the power of the devil. The sin is removed, the guilt is lifted, the pollution is washed away. Kagaya na binasa natin kanina sa John chapter 8, verse 10 to 11. And then Jesus, look at you and look at me as if to ask the same question na tinanong niya sa adulterous woman in John 8, 10 to 11. Women, men, my son, my daughter, where are those accusers? Has no one condemned you? And then you and I too will answer and will say, no one, Lord. And Jesus says to you, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. For he, or the Lord Jesus Christ, is your Savior, our Savior, our complete Savior, and your only Savior. His name is Jesus. For in him, you have the complete forgiveness of all your sins. Muli, samahan niyo po ako in prayer. Let us bow down our head. And pray to the Lord. Almighty God, who has promised to hear the petition of those who pray in your Son's name, 
We ask you mercifully to incline your ear to us who have now made our prayers and supplication to you. Father, grant that you may open our blind eyes, change our stony heart with a heart of flesh, that we may see and believe the name Jesus as our complete Savior and our exclusive Savior. May you grant this prayer according to your will, to the relief of our needs, and to the glory of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. This we pray. Amen.